Do you want to hear something awful? I mean, something really awful. It's like totally really awful. Let's just say, for instance, you're a regular, a regular person and you got a job and maybe your job is doing monthly verifications of physician providers in order to make sure that they have their licenses and they have their credentials in order so that they're able to bill medical insurance. Some people have jobs like that. I used to have a job like that. 2,000 people every month, at least 2,000 people. I had to go through 2,000 people. And it seems really rote and really boring. I have to put in all this information. You got to go through three different databases and make sure that they're up to snuff. And all three, <laughs> I said snuff, sorry, that they're on board, that they're doing the right thing, that they're you know certified, that they got what they need. Three different databases every month, all of these people. You have to do it. And it's boring. But, you know, every once in a while you find something amiss and then there's a process you have to go through. You have to let them know and then you have to put them on a list and then you have to make sure certain things are taken, you know, into account because they're not allowed to bill, which means they're not allowed to, to see patients. And then you got to see, like, well, what were they on the list for? All of these different things. It seems kind of boring. But then let's say something happens where all of a sudden you have to deal with waivers when it comes to certain kinds of fees and so your job is to process some paperwork and you're supposed to send it in and then you're supposed to wait for them to acknowledge it and once they acknowledge it they send you a confirmation letter and part of what you're probably doing is giving them timelines around whatever the local policy is especially in connection with the state policy because we're talking about state marketplaces and you get it and you start doing what you need to do and maybe you notice some trends like you've already noticed you were cross-referencing with the databases that you need to check every month and you notice that there's a very specific racialized pattern of who's allowed to be targeted at what times and it's kind of changed over time. It used to be different kinds of demographic groups got targeted for allegations they had committed Medicare fraud and then later it's other groups but the groups that were previously targeted then got targeted in a different way with very serious allegations. And now you're seeing trends in terms of the demographics of who's being accused of Medicare fraud. And now we're dealing with a public health pandemic. And I just had to send in these requests for deadlines to be adhered to, what our deadlines are going to be, what our time frame is going to be regarding these particular kinds of waivers, and the governor's making an announcement about people that don't have the appropriate credentials being able to step into first responder roles, which doesn't make any sense if you've actually received any sort of first responder training in the public health emergency preparedness and prevention system, which every state is required to have a specific and unique modality for and do annual trainings for at least since 2013. And now I'm checking the database with the waivers and I'm looking at all the states and I'm looking at their deadlines and I'm looking at the timelines and I'm fucking horrified. Who applied when? How long did they want it for? Did they get one or two or three or maybe four responses? Because we're not talking about billing Medicare anymore. So who was the person that was supposed to put their name on the request for the waiver from their state? A lot of those waivers, the first round of waivers, were due to expire in July and around now. Then you've got a cross-reference with each state in the other areas that they also had waivers for that were either expiring or that were being expanded and or associated with the waivers specifically for kinds of billings connected to COVID-19. Yeah, right? See, technically, the truth of the matter is I lost my job. I became unqualified to work after they tried to take out my kneecaps. I learned this the other day. Apparently, somewhere they call things like this. They have certain names. For it. You could get a double tap. You can get a six-pack. You can get a tenor. There's actually terms for doing that to people, except they talk about using bullets. 
but you can use various kinds of vibrational technologies and ultrasonic weapons to actually target a specific bone area in the body using the ICD-10 code. And if you have the right frequency, you can remotely break people's bones. I've been watching it for years. They tried to do it to me. You know, one night they actually broke my bone. And I just said, you know what? I'm not going to let them secure this break. I had a fracture in my foot before. I know that there are certain things I could do to exacerbate that fracture and then it would actually break. Or there are other things I could do to expedite the healing process and I will not go to the hospital so that they can record that I have a broken ankle today. I think that was March of 2018. Actually, in March of 2018, they tried to break my fucking ankle so I would go to the hospital and have to get an x-ray and maybe even one of those nice... Uh, boots that are made of some material that is a byproduct of the petrochem industry. Is there anybody out there that wants to cross-reference this and fact check it with their own <clears throat> job description? Are you doing this from your home now? That makes your house a crime scene.